Start with Dexfret, so it's a decentralized uh, platform based on blockchain technologies that allow shipper, carriers, and 3PL uh, to transact on the blockchain. So I introduce you to Hector Hernandez, the founder of Dexfret. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank Matthew and the guys that put together this amazing event. It's very nice to participate in the local environment, the Florida Blockchain Foundation guys and the Miami Beacon Council. Thank you very much for hosting us. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our platform. This is a platform. We're based out of Florida also in Plantation. Uh, we're building a decentralized platform uh, for logistics. Uh, a lot of you are going to be able to identify or relate to these issues, uh, even if you're not in th this specific part of the presentation is based on the surface freight, ma mainly truckload. But if you're in ocean or air you'll, or you're free forwarder, you should be able to grasp the concept and, and understand where this is going. So uh, we are building a decentralized platform for logistics. What does that mean? We've been hearing this term during the morning. So it means uh, decentralization uh, can be different type of decentralization. It could be a political decentralization, it could be ownership decentralization, or technology decentralization. What we're referring to here at the first level is it's a community-owned platform. It means that this is a platform owned by the users. And I'm going to go into uh, detail uh, later on. So this is a little bit, you, most of you know this, uh, uh, logistics market is the largest market there is. Uh, it's uh, forecasted to be 15.5 trillion by 2023. And the global triple year market uh, in the US is $100 billion per year. So we're gonna concentrate this presentation on, on the first mile and mid mile. Uh, but eventually this can also uh, take part or be applied to last mile. I'm going to make a simple example. I'm just going to go through this. There's some very impressive numbers of the, of the truckload industry in the U.S. So you have over 250,000 manufacturers with 15.5 uh, million trucks, 2 million of those tra are tractor trailers, 3.5 million truck drivers. We're at 30,000 driver shortage just in the, in the domestic market. So this is, this is the, an example that I want to make. I don't know if you can help me with this. It's, it's messed up. But anyway, so this is a real example. I'm, I run another company called World Transportation Services, which is a freight broker based out of Florida. So this is a real case. This happened to us uh, not long ago. Uh, there was a shipper. Um, it's a machine to pack oranges out of California that needed to be delivered in New Jersey. So we got one of our operations girl to go through this process of finding the carrier, usually it takes about three to four hours, then match that carrier, negotiate the rate, and then once they, find it, they finally, by using multiple platforms, um, agree on a rate, then you need to onboard that carrier if you, if you haven't worked with this carrier before. And again, this is a truck load carrier. So that process of onboarding a carrier also requires Maria, which by the way, he's, he's been doing this for a long time, he has a master's degree in logistics. It takes many hours for them to, to, to accomplish this task, and, and to do so, uh, on top of the expertise, she needs to use several platforms to be able to check reputation on the carrier, documentation, and so on and so forth, and then be able to dispatch the carrier. Then this data goes into the TMS usually, and that's how it gets dispatched. But visibility, if you really want to get it and the carrier don't have it, you need to also use another platform yet to, for the carrier to download an app and you'll be able to, to trace it back. So after that many hours, this is what ended up happening. Let me see if, yes. So, yeah, this is, this is what happened. So you need to question yourself, what is the reason of this accident? I mean, if she's such an expert and she did so, so, so much work and the shipper is trusting this third party to do the job, why is this happening? So this is one of the real case, uh, use cases that we can solve with blockchain. So that, that takes us to the main industry problems. And one that, that you always talk about is over-reliance on intermedi intermediaries. Why is it that we have so much intermediaries? That's one of the reasons. Because it's for, for a, a small business, even a large organization, it's very difficult not only to find the correct carrier, but to actually um, take, um, find out if it's a reputable carrier 
or, or assess the risk of moving the, the loads with that carrier. So you have several of, of these problems. No trusted reputation system, like I said. There's a lot of liquidity. This is expensive trailers, expensive trucks, expensive warehouses, but you also have uh, warehouses that um, fact, uh, invoices that are supposed to be paid 30 days later, that usually is more like 45, day, 45 to 60 days to get paid. Then shippers are trusting that the broker is doing their job, and even if they are, accidents like this happen. But if, if, if the broker manages this load for a shipper, uh, and they don't take possession of the load, the shipper is also expo exposed to huge liability risk that they're not fully aware of. Then uh, the other problem is all of these platforms don't talk to each other. So basically they are going, Maria had to go from one, copy, paste, email. And if, they, if, if the information is coming from an outside organization, it, the problem is even worse. And then you have the other issue in the industry with capacity is getting tight, very tight, and rates are getting exp very expensive. So I'm just going to go through this. So why blocking, which that takes us to this. So the first thing that we're trying to solve is identity. So if you are a, a, a small company, a small business size, size owner and try to find a truck, we're going to use blockchain to make sure that the identity of that carrier um, is immutable and you know exactly who you're dealing with. That's the first part. The second part about having blockchain is uh, immutable transactions. Um, so and the, the, the immutable is a very weird word, but basically, Identity that cannot be altered and is based on the blockchain is important, but then also the record of past transactions that can get attached to that one identity. So basically, and, and that's by the use of smart contracts, that is also why blockchain, we are able to bring KPIs of on-time delivery rate ratios and all the kind of things that you can measure with a smart contract attached to the carrier so an unsophisticated shipper can later on find a carrier and negotiate with them without knowing them uh, from, uh, from before. Right? The, the tokenized assets and liquidity is a big important part of this. So this is a platform that is owned by the users. So in, in centralized systems, Let's make an example that everybody understands. Facebook, everybody uses Facebook, okay? So you are the product of Facebook. Uh, you are actually, Facebook is getting revenue for selling or monetizing your data or selling you as a product. Uh, these platforms generate a lot of value, but usually only for the stakeholders or the owners. In the business to business arena, it's no different than this. You, the carrier is providing capacity, the shipper is providing loads, but all of this information is captured by a third party. It's not, your, it's not your data. They can do whatever they want with it. It can get hacked. It's vulnerable to a lot of things. So, so this, the capacity to have um, ownership distributed between all of the users allows to bring value and get it redistributed. And that's what tokens can do. Somebody was asking about tokens uh, before. We, we go into detail later. We, we can ask about it later. So the monetization of the data, oops. The, the monetization of the data here by the use of smart contracts can be measured and you can compensate the users that are bringing valuable data to the platform for the data they provide. And, and in our model, and we'll, we'll find very new ways to do this by the use of smart contracts and tokens. So, Again, the platform is, is also integrating the whole process from the beginning to end. So you have uh, the, the negotiation, the onboarding, the dispatch, the pickup, you're tracking all of this. So blockchain is in the middle and all of these actions that were before silo in multiple systems or across multiple organizations have, are, are moving seamlessly from one uh, step to the other with, with full visibility for all the parties involved. So this is how the platform looks like at the architectural level. So at the bottom, you have the blockchain foundational components that I described a minute ago, and, and that's where the smart contract runs. And on, on below that, there is a big, we use an open uh, network. It's actually, it's called RSK. You, you heard of it before from Diego, the CEO this morning. RSK is a, is a side chain to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, you heard, is slow. It's non-scalable. This side chain allows to have much more transactions in a very secure way. And when the transaction finalizes, it gets stored in the Bitcoin, which is the largest and more secure network there is. 
At the middle layer is where the carrier, the shipper, and the other actors can find each other, negotiate rates, transact, and then it goes to the smart contract. We're not charging the users for using the platform. At the top layer, we have a new, now, now all of these transactions, keep in mind, are, do, are done today in paper. It's faxes, emails. So every time Maru, I was describing there, find the truck, they negotiate on the phone most of the time. This is spot truck load. Then in contract, it's a little bit different, but, but the principles remain. At the top layer now, where you have this new level of digitization using the smart contracts. You can bring new services that didn't exist before. What I'm talking about is you can provide insurance on demand. You can have an invoice that is tokenized now because you have all the, you know the parties involved on that invoice. And you also can measure the risk on chain. You know exactly what the performance of the carrier, what is the performance of the driver. You also know if that particular lane is high risk or the commodity that's being transported is high risk. With all of this data, and you know how good of a PG the shipper is. And this, this reputation being immutable makes this invoice a, a, an asset that's easy convert to a token that somebody can buy a discounted rate, replacing uh, you know, or, or disrupting industries like trade finance or, or factoring. Uh, the other services are, are, are all there, you can see it, but the other important one is insurance. Insurance, if the, if the truck is parked, um, they still pay for insurance. If the truck is, 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 is running with not a, with, without a load, they still have the liability coverage on. So there's no effective way to do it on demand. This way, we can bring new insurance to the industry that is non-existent today. So let me just skip forward this. So this is, this is how it works in tokens. So I'm going to make it as simple as possible. So we, we have a three token model. Sounds really complicated, but it's not. So we have a the stable token here is basically the means of transfer of money. Why do we need a token there? So if you have a cross-border payment, it's immediate payment. You don't need a banking in the middle. There's no fees. So the, 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 the parties on the transaction agree in dollars. There's a dollar amount. And at the end, when they receive the signature, when the delivery is, is processed, then the smart contract holding the funds can release the funds and, and the carrier gets paid and there's no invoice, there's no 30 days, there's no POD retrieval, there's nothing. The other part, the, the reward token that we have in the middle, so this one is transfer of value. Reward token, uh, this reward token, what it means is we talk about giving ownership to the platform users. And this is a smart way to do that. So basically, the more transactions that you bring to the platform, the more value that you're bringing, you accumulate these points, and you, you then accumulate prestige. And at some point, depending on the level you are, you can even exchange it for the stable token as a, cash, as a cashback, so you can pay for it for, for transactions, or as a security token, which is actually equity in the company. So this is very powerful. The value that's created is secured by the, it's actually coming back to the users. Not only get, get, they get money for the data, but they also get, get uh, equity in the company. They get voting power, they get revenue sharing, and this is, this is really important. And this is a big difference between uh, private and, and public uh, blockchains. So it looks very simple. I don't want to go into detail, but it, at, in, at the forefront, you have an app. It's very similar to any other centralized application. The blockchain ha magic happens since the end. Actually, there's, there's a booth outside. We can show it to you. Um, this, I, I'm not going to go into much detail there. So this is where we are right now. Uh, the company, we were able to do the first truck load in blockchain at the uh, on 15, October 15th. Um, now we're about to launch the beta version with transaction for, for world transportation services and other freight brokers that we have LOIs with and, and shippers that are also part of the initiative. And we are aiming to, to process about 80,000 shipments by, this, by December 2, 2023. This is some growth projections that I want to go into. I just want to go a little bit into the, the, the team that, that is part of, of, of this effort. So Rajat, you, you, you saw Rajat this morning. He, he has a PhD in transportation, a lot of experience working with government and in blockchain also. Um, you have Ricardo, he's the former CIO uh, of BHP Billington, the largest mining company in the world. You have me, I've been 20, 20 plus years working in, in international trade and, and freight brokerage. Adrian is also here. He's the founder of Fortune 3, it's an e-commerce platform with over 2,000 shippers. 
uh, you have Alfonso, he's the creator of a, of a transportation management software called uh, StarCore. It's also an, an expert on machine learning. And Robert, he owns Lean Staffing Solutions. It's a nearshore operation out of Colombia, servicing 40 plus US logistics companies, uh, managing over $5 billion worth of transactions. Um, so, some of the advisors, uh, Diego, the, the guy that you saw there, the CEO, is one of the advisors, Dave Sparks. So DAT, I don't know if you're familiar, DAT is the, the, the load board. If you're not in the truck of space, when these carriers or shippers are finding each other, they're using what is called a load board. It basically, it's a Craigslist where you say, I have this load in this zip code, I want to go this place, to this other place, and the trucking company can see it, and then you call the phone. But the largest one in the US has been in the market for, I think, over 20 years is DAT. So Dave Sparks um, is the founder of Transcore, the company that actually acquired DAT not long ago. And you have Justin is here. You can also meet him. He's an expert in, in reward and loyalty programs. Ernesto is also here that you can also meet. So basically, I'm going to leave you with a short video. Um, I don't know if, hold on. Here it is. Of that Genesis law that I mentioned before, and I'll be happy to answer any other questions here or after we're done. I don't know if, oh, hold on. Oops. You, Matthew, yes. give me one second. Can you maximize this? Just maximize it. And yeah. volume. This is the one. So this takes you on the on the whole process. So this is the carrier. And then and Tuno USA, the shipper, out of all other placing the order. Arel Trucking, for, for the, as a fleet of 400 trucks. Re, they receive the order, the load, the, load, the load tender, negotiate the rate, accept the deal. Now it goes into the smart contracts. What will excite us about Dexpert is the transparency and the fact that we can get feel secure about what we're doing business with and see the past track record of the, of the trucker. Uh, and no, to know that that can't be played around with, everything is uh, it's an honest information. Uh, our customers are very particular about delivery time and for us to be able to be able to track the truck and know uh, where it's at in a certain period. We wanted to brand the truck because there's a lot of noise in the space but nobody's really actually moving freight and we wanted to be the first one that we actually got a lot of press coverage because of it. So now the, the, the truck driver get dispatched, the app or the driver will, will help him uh, with directions to get to the place. Some of you know this place probably. So frozen seafood, somebody mentioned before, it's good to track frozen, all of the details from temperature, a pickup location, any sensors that you have, we can add to the smart contract add to, to each transaction in an immutable way so everybody can know, if we're talking about freshness, they can, all of that can be added here. It truly is an honor uh, for us to be the first ones and to join in this effort with companies such as Dex Freight and RSK and Neruno and a couple of the people that we've gone together in order to truly make this a reality. Um, really, we are blessed with this opportunity that has been afforded to us, and we welcome it. We think technology is obviously the wave of the present and obviously the wave of the future, and we will uh, happily uh, do everything we can to uh, foster this, not only for Arel Trucking, but for the whole trucking industry. We feel that this is really important for the entire trucking industry. So with the use of the QR codes, then you can verify that you are actually getting the, the load that, that is assigned to you and the driver is the right driver for your order. So the double brokering that usually happens in this space uh, can get stopped on the tracks by, by using this. And then once it's received and scanned, you can release payment automatically from the smart contract or even target or, um, trigger or other workflows. Now we can go beyond uh, storing and transferring value into having agreements between the parties. And that's what is enabling things like Dexpert, where we can have a set of rules, in this case for logistics, for, for a specific industry, 
where all the participants know that those, those uh, business rules will, will be fulfilled 100%. Nobody can get in between and change the rules to their needs. So that level of trust enables businesses among parties that don't have previous trust among them. So seeing this thing happens for us is, is uh, the joyous moment in our lives, is when we see the technology becoming a tool for that, for, for improving the businesses and organizations and our society. So, so this is why we live for. So that covers a little bit of, of the first struggle that we did with the MVP. And just to, one last thing that I wanted to mention, some recent achievements. So we got invited by World Economic Forum to, your, to join uh, the initiative for supply chain. They see supply chain as a solution for financial inclusion for third world countries. Um, we're also uh, very excited to participate in, in a project with the Port of Veracruz where we're helping build the port community system uh, using, using blockchain uh, and our, our platform. And, and the first struggle that I mentioned before and some of the coverage you, you've, we've, we've got in the media. That, that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to. <laughs> questions? I have one question. Um, so we, we see uh, the, the truckers and the people in the video using uh, a technology. Uh, how, how do you see uh, going forward uh, technology adoption and, and the digital transformation of this industry uh, in order to allow uh, mass adoption uh, for this technology to happen in the, in the trucking space, carrier shippers? Uh, where are we now and how do you see mass adoption? So in the recent, I would say last three years, you've been seeing a lot of uh, capital coming to the industry. So uh, it's a lot of innovation. It's a very, uh, most of them are very early stages, but you also see centralized platforms like Uber Freight, Convoy, and all these other ones that are already obtaining valuations over a billion dollars in just three years in the making. So it is happening. Uh, unfortunately, those models, the centralized model, I think they have an expiration date on them, uh, but in, it's happening right now. Digitization, everybody's interested. You have, you have this crowd here. Is this, was to be organized two years ago, nobody would show up. So it, it, this is the, the spirit of collaboration that somebody else mentioned that is really important yeah. because now you see the ports coming together with the steamship lines, uh, with, you know, with port operators, with uh, trucking companies, trying to all get together to find solutions that will help across the board. So I think the, the adoption is starting to happen and within very short period of time, two or three years, uh, we're gonna see a, a huge change in the industry. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Any question? Yep, over there, over there. Wilson. Uh, yes, any of your systems, uh, and maybe you mentioned it and I couldn't hear it, I'm sorry. Um, did you mention anything about how your system integrates with the new requirements of the FDOT for tracking the mileage on the, the electronic uh, logs? Yes. That's a good question. What's in it for the driver, basically? Yeah, I'm so, so the electronic log man, the, the ones that don't know the yield demand, they basically a driver have a limit of hours. It's been like that forever. Before it was done in paper, at the beginning of last year, it got enforced and the driver has a, a limit on the amount of hours they can drive per day. So now they have an electronic mm -hmm. device in the truck and they cannot fake re uh, records anymore. So. Uh, what we're doing here is we're integrating most of these devices have some level of connectivity. And if, if they don't, then there's also third party devices that are being built that they can connect to the ELD devices to transmit signals. So all of these IoT devices, we can get data from um, via APIs and using oracles, we can bring this data to the smart contract to trigger certain events and record all the data. So, you, as a, as a shipper or, or a broker or a free forwarder, can see exactly everything that happened in that trip. That, that level of visibility didn't have it before. So yeah, we're building from the get-go uh, with a mindset of integrating as much that data as we can from all these multiple data sources. Back to tokens. Can you go back to that slide? Yes. So the, yeah. you have multiple token functionality here. Yeah, right? I think in the last, I heard your question before, and I, and I think where it gets confusing, I'm, I'm gonna try to, there's two different things here. So when we're talking about Bitcoin blockchain and what Bitcoin as a token, that coin for transfer of value, 
And they were also confused about if I put the information, who's verifying the information before. And Rayal put it very simple. You don't need to worry about tokens when you're putting information on the blockchain. You know, at the end, so you need to know that there is a cost associated with hashing, which is the technical word that's used, to record something immutable. Okay? At that level, that's what we're doing in the platform. We are covering those costs. You don't need to worry about that. So forget about the tokens within the blockchain or how it get, the validation that's happening is just we're gonna, we all agree that we're going to record this transaction. The transaction happened, and it's not going to be moved from there. So that's the other thing you asked before. On these tokens, one token is a stable coin. Okay? Imagine you have a PayPal account. It's a very simple example. If you have funds, you have a funding source, which is your bank. You get the money connect from your bank to the Dex Free account, and you can transfer funds to fund your account in Dex Free. When that token, you're not actually negotiating, buying, purchasing uh, in the forefront. You don't know it's happening. You're negotiating dollars with your carrier. It's two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, Miami to California shipment, and those those stable coins work in the background. So that when the value gets transferred from you to the carrier, it doesn't go through a bank, to a bank, or to any clearing house or credit card information. So it's it's a lot cheaper and a lot faster. So the other two that you see there. The one on top, and they're going to make a better job than me this afternoon explaining security tokens. But basically, it's a, it's a representation, a tokenized representation of stock in the company, common stock in the company. And the reward, you're used to this, airline miles, right? So the more shipments you make, the more miles you get. But this time around, it's not miles that I, I as an owner of Dexray, can come and give you more or less. These tokens are blockchain-based tokens. So your balance is yours and yours only, and I cannot touch it. That, and what that means is if you accumulate enough tokens, then you can get certain rewards, including equity in the company. So I, I don't know if that covered the... Got it. Perfect. Thanks.